the fixed net fishing method is used to catch sardine, horse mackerel, sea bream, yellowtail and squid. The net consists of a hedge net for blocking the passage of migrating fish, and a bag net to catch the fish. It is a type of passive fishing, which involves predicting the routes of fish runs and waiting for the fish to come. Unlike fishing methods that involve going after and catching large quantities of fish by surrounding a school of fish with a net from a large boat, this method is environmentally friendly and helps to preserve resources. The fishing site is located a 30-minute to 1-hour sail from the port. The boats leave the port before dawn and came back in the morning, therefore, the fish is kept very fresh. Along the east coast of the Noto Peninsula, fixed net fishing is very popular, its scale is one of the biggest in Japan. Nanao City faces onto Toyama Gulf, where there are so many fish all year round that it is referred to as a natural fish tank. Winter yellowtail is caught from November through February, and the catch of blowfish in Yamaguchi from April through June is the largest in Japan. Many fixed nets are placed in positions visible from the shore. Have you ever seen rows of floating round balls lined up like a constellation on the sea surface? Its shape is similar to the constellations Scorpio and Gemini, and the largest ones are several times the size of a baseball field, and the area in which they fish individually can be more than 1050 meters long swimming pools. You can't see them at all because they're submerged in the sea, but there's a bag-shaped net built underneath the rows of floating balls. Fixed nets are often placed in places with complex terrain or large bays to serve as pathways for fish. Keep an eye out for it as you drive along the coast. This is a method of fishing that does not involve searching or chasing fish but simply opening the entrance to the net and waiting for the fish to swim in. To guide fish into the net, first, a long net called Michiyami is stretched from shore to offshore. This acts like a wall in the middle of the ocean, blocking the passage of fish. When the fish see the net, they head out to sea and enter the area surrounded by the net called the playground. Fish with nowhere to go will get lost and swim up a slope called a climbing net and get caught in a box net. However, there are many fish leaving the net through the entrance to the playground. The fisherman will catch the remaining fish that will not leave the net until it is time to set the net. Fishermen go out by boat every morning to catch fish in time for the auction at the market. Small nets need many people, large nets need more than 30 people. Recently, the performance of ships and machinery has improved, making it easier to cast large nets. The box net is shaped like a bag, the fish are collected in one place by lifting it from the head. The collected fish will be put on the boat and brought to the port. You won't know what kind of fish and how many are there until you cast the net. It's a fun quest, like opening a treasure chest every morning. If you use a large net, you can catch fish worth tens of millions of yen in just one go. The mesh is made from chemical fibers just like the clothes you usually wear. At the net factory, machines are used to bundle, twist or cross thin threads to create nets. The nets coming out of the machine are sewn together by hand to form a permanent net. When it comes to large fixed nets, up to 20 to 40 different types of nets with different yarn colors, mesh sizes, yarn materials and thicknesses are used to make one net. Fixed nets need to maintain their shape for long periods of time under the sea, so a variety of strong and heavy nets are used. It took nearly half a year and more than 100 million yen to create a new large fixed net. We mainly fish for yellowtail, salmon, sardines and squid. They caught fish swimming in the net so they were able to return to the boat alive. The caught fish are landed at a nearby port and then immediately brought to market. That's why fish caught in fixed nets will be delivered fresh to your table. Fixed nets can catch many types of fish depending on the region and season. Salmon and tuna in Hokkaido and Tohoku, yellowtail squid and fireflies in Hokuriku, and sea bream in areas where the Kuroshio current flows. Yellowtail, horse mackerel, mackerel, sardines, can be caught in waters across the country. Occasionally, rare visitors such as megamoth, oarfish and sunfish may enter the net, but they are released from the net alive.
I come from a small fishing village called Udigo district in Abu town, located in the northern sea of Japan in Yamaguchi prefecture, which has recently become famous for its Aegis ashore deployment problem. My parents married shortly after the war and started a fish brokerage business, transporting large quantities of locally caught fish by truck to wholesale markets in the Hiroshima area. In my hometown, there are two large-scale fixed fishing organizations in the village called the Oshiki Association, and I have seen and heard about fixed fishing in various forms since I was a child. Under these circumstances, I became deeply interested in stationary fishing. Before this roundtable discussion, I read Director Hayes's report. I completely agree with you about the importance of stationary fishing. Inland marine fisheries production in 2018 was 3.36 million tons, of which 970,000 tons came from inshore fisheries. Of which, the production volume of captive fisheries is 240,000 tons for large captive fisheries, 80,000 tons for salmon fisheries and 90,000 tons for small captive fisheries, with a total production of 400,000 tons, making this industry has become a key industry accounting for more than 40% of total coastal seafood production. Therefore, to ensure a stable seafood supply in the future, local fishing will play an important role in production as the main industry of inshore fisheries. Additionally, captive fisheries require a large number of seafarers due to their style of operation, while also creating employment opportunities in the local area by taking on new workers and older fishermen, and providing locals with a steady supply of fresh fish. Contribute significantly to the revitalization of the region by providing local energy. In fact, I have seen areas where captive fishing has become the core of the area's revitalization, and combined with town boosting policies, the area is gradually becoming a marginal settlement. I completely agree with the five important characteristics of large-scale permanent fisheries pointed out in Director Hayes's report. In other words, learning fishing techniques is relatively easy, stable working hours, low accident rate, open to new workers. We realize five advantages of large-scale stationary fishing. This is an essential industry for the survival of beaches. When considering the fishing methods and socio-economic position of the captive fishery, it has unique characteristics not found in other fisheries. This overlaps with Director Hayes's report, but I would like to state my understanding. The first characteristic of stationary fishing is that it is relatively easy to learn fishing techniques. Dot. Fixed fishing is a method of fishing with nets set year-round in fishing grounds from a few hundred meters to a few kilometers from the coast, so it does not require the accumulation of knowledge and experience such as the ability to search for advanced fishing grounds. High, easy to work in groups. For this reason, it can be said that this is a fish that is easy to learn fishing techniques. The second characteristic of fixed fishing occupations is stable working hours, working days, and work schedules compared to other fishing occupations. Quote dot. In fixed fishing activities, the fishing grounds are located close to the coast, the operating time is short, from departure to return about 2 to 4 hours, the time to classify caught products is short, about 1 hour, which is active during the day. This is because fishing start times are set to coincide with fish market opening times, and regular fishing holidays are often set in advance to coincide with shipping market closing days. The third characteristic of stationary fishing is that it is an extremely safe occupation within the fishing industry. In fixed fishing, you can choose not to go fishing on dangerous days due to strong winds and waves, and you can choose to remove the net and temporarily stop fishing during storms, so there is a possibility of accidents due to changes in fishing. Sudden changes in sea conditions at sea because this ratio is extremely low. The fourth characteristic of the captive fishery is that it becomes a source of employment. Fishing with nets is a collective activity, making it easy to learn fishing techniques, and the working environment makes it easy for new workers and the elderly with no fishing experience, making it fun. Become a potential source of employment for many people. 
The fifth characteristic of a captive fishery is that it provides a steady supply of fish. Fixed fishing is possible because the boat is large enough to be able to go fishing even on days when small coastal fishing boats under 5 tons cannot go out to fish and can provide a stable source of fresh fish for people. Local and market every day. Days throughout the year. The sixth characteristic of local fishing is that it allows for high freshness transport and transportation regulation. Quote dot. In fixed fishing, the fishing grounds are close and the operating time is short, so the caught products can be transported to the fishing port quickly so they can be landed and transported in a fresh condition. The seventh characteristic of fixed fishing is that it can meet diverse consumer needs. Single quote single quote dot. This is because stationary fisheries target many different fish species, from migratory to resident fish, and can support dozens of species. In addition, in large-scale permanent fisheries nationwide, seven fish species are considered particularly important in terms of production volume and production value, including salmon, yellowtail, horse mackerel, squid, mackerel and sardines, as well as Spanish mackerel. Can be mentioned as increasing recently. The eighth characteristic of stationary fishing is that it can contribute to resource conservation. Quote dot. The stationary fishing method is a passive fishing method in which the fish waits for the fish to visit and catch, which means it is resource friendly. On the other hand, this is also a poor fishing method in protecting specific fish species because it has low backquote backquote fish species selectivity. The ninth characteristic of the captive fishery is that it occupies an important position as a regional recovery nucleus through local production for local consumption and employment. Although fixed fishing has these strengths, during the period of being granted a fixed fishing license, fishing gear is used for a long time in a fixed fishing ground, so it is susceptible to fishing gear damage due to waves, sudden high tides due to storms, bomb cyclones, etc. This has led to many cases of businesses going bankrupt. They are easily affected by fluctuations in resources due to climate change and changes in the marine environment, leading to large fluctuations in fishing output. There is one aspect that requires a huge initial investment, management capital investment, for fishing gear and fishing boat equipment. Delays in updating production facilities for boats, fishing gear, etc. can easily lead to inefficient and high-risk production systems. Due to instability and declines in fish catches in recent years, rising costs of fuel and materials related to fishing, falling fish prices due to the coronavirus pandemic, as well as aging and shortages, missing crew as the area became more difficult. There are many areas where the business environment is deteriorating. Captive fisheries also suffer from these backquote backquote weaknesses, and there have been cases where profits have declined and business continuity has been threatened due to difficulty in reinvesting after a disaster. Plan to reform large-scale captive fishing, a profitable fishing business, taking into account environmental conditions in each region and planning various initiatives to further develop the region's strengths and overcome its weaknesses. While some of these efforts have been very successful, others have not been possible because of unprecedented changes in environmental conditions or because they have not achieved full results. In the Edo period, large nets and standing nets were set up in fixed positions to catch migrating fish. However, the fish entered easily but also had the disadvantage of escaping easily. Later, in the Meiji period, Hidaka-style large nets and Ueno-style large nets became mainstream, and by the end of the Taisho era, backquote backquote drop nets became the basis of the fixed nets that have now emerged. Presently, the downside is that they easily escape from nets which have improved and now the fishing industry has developed to the point where you can choose what type of fish you want to catch. However, the nature of fixed nets is to wait for fish to migrate, so the catch is unstable due to climatic and sea conditions that still exist. Bad weather and high tides not only make fishing unstable, but nets can break and be swept away during natural disaster level storms. If the net is destroyed, restoration could cost hundreds of millions of yen, depending on the size of the net. 
Additionally, if a direct hit of the storm is expected, it will take time and effort to remove the nets and reinstall them after the storm passes. In some areas such as Okinawa, there are comments pointing to a relationship between set nets and dugongs. It has been suggested that fixed nets are the main cause of dugong deaths and some people see this as a problem. Okinawa Prefecture has established a dugong...